Hello, it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and welcome to another Maker's Monday. I hope you are having a great day so far, and if you're not, take a little break, sit back, relax, um, and uh, I'll show you my little project for the day. So I have this lovely brooch. I think this is a, supposed to be a Spanish lady, um, but if you look carefully, you'll see there's a big chunk out of there. It's been damaged here and glued back together. There's some chunks out of the other side. So the the outside rim of this brooch is in not very good shape. Um, and I was inspired by a video from Marcia at Jars to Jewels. You might also know her from her other original channel, uh, our vintage store. So Marcia took a an earring, an Art Deco style painted earring, and she made a bezel for it. And her instructions were so straightforward that all of a sudden for me, a light bulb lighted up and I thought, oh, okay, I understand finally what the purpose of right angle weave is. You might uh, have encountered um, the terminology R-A-W, raw, right? Just stands for right angle weave. Or you might have seen craw, cubic right angle weave. And if you don't get the very basics from the beginning, you can be like me going back through the instructions over and over again, trying to remember how this thing works. Well, right angle weave makes a, not a straight flat, you know, column, but it makes um, a weave where the beads stick up out of the weave so you start with a square and then you add three beads. So you have a center row and then you have two beads alternating up above and below all the way along that row. And those um, beads that are sticking up or down are spaced apart and they become the spacers for your gourd or what's sometimes called um, peyote stitch that adds um, the straight layers that add on to the beads. Um, I thought I would do a little sample to begin with because it just made so much sense to me when Marcia did it. And I thought I would show you what she did and then maybe that'll help you if you ever get into bead weaving. Um, my bead weaving usually involves um, weaving on a loom or following patterns. I love certain bracelets with different, you know, uh, paisley beads. Um, Tila beads, little tiles and squares. So I'm just going to take four black beads and I'm going to put them in a circle running the needle back through all of them. I suppose you could tie off the circle if you like doing that. I'm going to be weaving the... Whoops! I didn't do that right, did I? got my four beads uh, on my thread. I'm using Fireline thread. So there's my end. So I'm going to go back through where the end is to make a circle. Carefully pull this through. There's my circle. And I don't want to pull too hard because I want to keep a good uh, thread at the end for tying in or threading back in. So here's what looked like two, you know, there we go, two rows of beads. But actually, this is the configuration. You're going to have two that are going down the center, and you're going to have two, one above and one below, that stick above and below the center line of beads. And I think this is where I've always had the um, confusion about right angle weave. Now, it says once you've gone through, you should actually keep going and end up in the bead opposite where the tail is. So I'm going to keep going. One thing I don't like about this black fire line, and I prefer smoke for that reason, is the black fire line sheds color over time as you're beading, and you have to keep washing your hands. So here's where my tail is. So I'm going to go to the bead opposite the tail, right there, and come out at the top. Now I am ready to go. So I am going to alternate rows of color so that you can, just for a sample, so that you can see what is happening and you might be able to see that a little better. So I'm going to do the next row. Here's 
the way I'm going, I'm going to add on to here. I'm just through. So you're going to add three beads. Even though you started with four, you're going to add three. I'm using size eight beads. These are larger than what I would have used for the project. Now my string came out of, where's my, there's my tail. My string came out of here. So I'm going to go through that same bead from the bottom. So that's clockwise. Pull it up. Sorry, it's hard to, I have it hard to see on the camera. So there it adds this row and you can see two naturally form a right angle or the three naturally form a right angle. Then you go back through a total of six beads. So I'm gonna go through the three that I just added. One, two, three. Through the original bead that I attached them to, this one, this black one. And then I want to come out at the bead opposite where I started. So that's, I've gone through four beads of the six, or four beads, and there's two more. So I end up going through each round. After I attach the three new beads, I end up going through six beads. And already you can see that sort of up and down structure happening. So I'm going to add another row. I'll just add a couple of rows so you get a good idea for how this works. Um, pick up three more beads. Now, my thread came out the bottom this time. So now I'm going to go anti-clockwise. If that confuses you, you can always just flip your work over so that it said it come, so you're coming out the top each time. But if basically, whatever direction the thread's coming out, you just go in the opposite side of that bead. Now, there's, again, the next right angle added. And I came out the bottom there, so I'm going to go th up through the three beads. One. Sorry, this is harder to do looking through the camera than I would have thought. It's kind of like doing things in the mirror, but not quite. So I went through those three. There's the original bead that I started with, the little original silver. So that's number four, and I want to end up at the bead opposite the silver bead. So then I go through number five and number six. So if I'm adding three beads, then I have to go through twice that many to get to my next starting point. So again, you can see the two silvers sticking out, the two blacks. So I'm going to add another row of silver. And I try to do that this from looking at the beads directly and not looking at the camera. Again, this time I came out the top of the bead so I can go clockwise in the bottom of the black through the three silvers. You can use shorter needles than, I just happen to like this long needle. It's nice and flexible. They end up, they end up almost practically in a U shape when I'm done, but it doesn't matter. They're inexpensive. I have some really nice ones that are short and stiffer, but, and, but for this demo it's good. So, and out the far side. And now, I've, so you can see I've done the, the, the base row, two, three, four rows. And I just keep going with rows till this is long enough for what I need. And again, this is just the base I'm making of the bezel. Um, I'm going to go back, once I've got something that fits all the way around my brooch, I'm going to go back and I'm start going to start doing gourd stitch where a bead goes in between each of these beads, tightens it up, firms it up, and then I can keep layering um, until I have my bezel. And I can also add different sizes of beads, different colors of beads. So I'm going to switch from this. I'll show you what I've done so far. This is what I've done in the uh, size 10 beads. Um, 
Come on, focus. All right, there we go. So that's what I've done so far. It's barely enough to go just across the top. I had estimated about six inches. Let's see how much of space that is. That's about an inch and a half. So I got at least uh, three times as much to go. I'm going to finish doing this and then I'm going to come back and we'll see what happens next. Thanks very much. Stay tuned. Hello. So here I am with my just slightly over six inch uh, string of right angle weave. I'm not sure if I have a slightly too many beads or not. Um, I thought I would show you some of my bead rejects. I'm going to stick them here on the uh, the needle. This is something you need to watch for as you're going through beads. There we go. So you can see some of those are very wide and some of those are thin. And the actual beads that I used, um, there's another real thin one. Is it going to show up? Oh, it doesn't want to show up. There it is. That's a pretty thin one. This, I'll get one more. And I'll get three. So, so those were sort of the average beads of what I used. Um, so you need to be careful, especially if you're uh, reusing something. There, you can see how thick that one is compared with those other three and how thin how thin that one is compared to them so you need to watch that as you're uh, using seed beads um, you know check beads check seed beads uh, are generally um, pretty consistent um, but you do need to watch Japanese seed beads are even more consistent in size they're a little more expensive um, but again you still need to watch because there can be manufacturing um, problems so when we get to the end of the ring here there's really only space to join this together with two beads so I have my come on camera there we go so I have my two ends, and there's going to be a bead above and a bead below. So I have put on my, I can't remember how to do this properly. I'm going to put on one bead, go through the end, put on my other bead. Okay, so we're gonna pull this tight, and uh, I had to—I didn't have quite enough thread. I like to work in shorter lengths of thread because I have short arms. Um, my wingspan is smaller than some people, so I've put on the next bead. I'm gonna go down through here, and then around the circle again which is harder to do on the camera than you would expect. Just don't want to get all these ends in there. Around like that. And I need to go through that other bead once more so that it's not loose. So I'm going to go around again. Through those two. Where's my string there? Coming out of there and through those two. And I have joined my bezel. Now let's see how this behaves. See, it's a nice little sort of stand-up collar. Take this, put that like that, and I think it's too long. 
I'm going to flip it over. Um, I mean, I don't want it tight because I need, I'm going to be pulling beads up on each side to fit it on, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be just a little, that just that little corner there bit too long, uh, too much to pull in. So I'm going to go away from the camera, take that out and come back and show you the next stage after I've made it fit this uh, better. Okay, so I went away and I took off uh, six beads, so basically two rows. I've um, put I put one bead on, came through the end, put a second bead on, came back to um, the beginning, I guess, uh, however you want to describe those, so that I make the circle that joins and have my last two, see the, there's the two straight rows, one here, one there, and there's the two upper and lower beads. And then I just have to go through that again so that it's nice and firm and I am ready go through those two. Just don't, I hate getting tangled thread. One, two, pull this tight, figure out where I am in the circle, one, Two. Sorry, this is hard to do with the camera. Uh, there we go. So I can't remember if I mentioned that it took going from an inch and a half, it took me 45 minutes to do the other four and a half inches. So Oh, an inch and a half in 15 minutes? You know, you wonder, might be wondering, is it worth it for something like this that's old and damaged? But, you know, if we, if we don't take time and care to repair things, then we just keep throwing away so much in our world. I mean, I know the people at the thrift store come to, uh, that they, they tend to look forward to chatting with me because I tend to embellish my clothes if I get a little rip or something um, or a patch that wears through I'll put a flower patch on it or bead something on it and they said it's just kind of uh, fun to see what I'm wearing or what I've done to embellish things and I met a nurse once who said oh I love what you've done with your pants all the flowers all over them and I, you know, I explained the purpose and she said, well, I do that with my shoes at the nursing home where I work. I put ribbons and, and uh, beads and stuff on them, make them really colorful. And it's just a delight then to talk to the people in the home about the colors that I'm wearing. So I think repurposing, repairing things makes things have a new life or, or, or in a way it acknowledges the value of something by keeping it going. So there's my little soapbox for the day. I still think this might be too loose, but um, since this is doing my first time doing this, I'm going to go ahead with it. Um, so now what I need to do is make sure that's good and firm. I might go around once more, and then I'm going to start doing the peyote or gourd stitch. Um, we tend to call it gourd stitch here in Canada because we uh, are very sensitive to um, uh, not appropriating terms or rituals of our First Nations people. And um, the peyote ceremony is uh, an indigenous ceremony and the regalia used in the ceremony um, often is beaded with a stitch that has become associated with the ceremony and so called peyote stitch, particularly in the US. Um, but its more generic name is called uh, gourd stick, stitch, G O U R D. Um, and so when you hear me refer to gourd stitch, it's because I'm uh, trying to uh, be politically correct here in Canada. I guess that's what you would say. 
Anyway, um, I'm going to tighten this up and then I'll come back and show you the progress of the gourd stitch. So here's my beaded edge and I've started to add the alternating beads. So I've added, a, I put a bead on, go through the next bead that's sticking above the edge, pull my thread, and you'll see it, the, that bead I add in sort of sits right in the slot there, but it also sticks up so that I can keep building up the edge and making it wider. So here's my next one. And I'll just keep going around till I've done a whole row around and then I'll fit and see how things are going um, with my bezel and I'll be back. So I've taken uh, two additional rounds of gourd stitch and it's really starting to pull in my uh, bezel frame and it's about as tight I think as I want it. Um, there it is if I put it in from the back it doesn't yeah and if I push it around to the front all these little extra bits of there we go so I think that's going to fit very nicely um, sorry I gotta get it on there we go like that it's gonna pull around um, a little bit as I go to the next colors and sizes of beads so I'm gonna actually um, go to smaller beads at the front. I'd like to not just have a plain black bezel but actually have gold on it because I liked the way the gold was originally around the outside here. Um, so I'll be going to from a size 10 beads uh, to smaller ones size 11 in gold and there are my 11 golds that I'm going to be using. I hope that'll look good. I thought I would just give you an idea on my sample what it looks like. I hope this is clear enough. So I'm just going from, I finished up uh, my right angles. There's with the black and you can and the silver, you can see the right angles. So now I've come from this end, put a gold in each space or between each bead that sticks out. Here's another gold going through between the black and the black and the silver sorry I gotta there we go and just try not to wrap your I think I did wrap it around let's make sure we don't wrap the the thread around the thing so there's another one done and then I'll do one more so between the silver and the black and initially you would think doing this that you were just filling in the spaces. Like I said, I'll try not to wrap it around. But as you look at the edge, it does still stand up slightly. So there's always a row of beads that's slightly higher. And that's what you're putting um, your next row of beads between. So the next row will come back, or if I was going in a circle, but it would come back between the two golds and I'll see lovely patterns you can develop um, so that's a sample that I'll uh, keep for later so I'm going to start going to my um, my little uh, 11s and I love these little trays um, they're triangle bead trays but when you've got your beads on um, a bead cloth like this they just lift up so easily and then can go back in their bags. I, um, ugh. or if you spill them, you can very easily pick them up and put them back in their containers or bags. Um, I find those much easier than a, sp a bead spoon and much because much more practical because you can you know put beads in them move them around have a, a variety of beads on the table excuse me I have an itchy hand now 
all this washing to keep you can see how black my fingers are again from that thread um, that black it but it doesn't rub off when you're in the actual beading it's just um, this is uh, the beadsmith well this is the smoke well I guess there must be a gray or a silver then because there was is one lighter than this that doesn't the color doesn't rub off in the same way Anyway, I like it for beading it. I like uh, other, I like the Nymo threads as well. Um, but I thought this needed to be sturdy and uh, had the black handy. So I'll come back with some golds and uh, I'll let you see how I'm doing. I'm learning as I go here. So um, I'll make sure I put the, dis the link to Marcia's uh, making a bezel video. Uh, on YouTube and uh, I'll uh, put any other references that I think would be useful uh, in the description as well. Well, it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes and here I'm back with my bezel almost completed because it was so much fun uh, doing the stitching I forgot to stop and uh, show you uh, halfway before I actually got it fitted around here. So I did I think I showed you when I had two rows of gold added and I ended up doing four rows of gold but uh, after the first two I started um, decreasing and a decrease is very simple instead of putting um, a bead in a slot what you do is you just take uh, which side here okay so instead of putting a bead here I would just pull my thread through and put a bead in the next one and it and then when you pull the the, the thread taut this closes up in like that basically and uh, it decreases so that's what I ended up doing decreasing and then it didn't fit um, flat like this the way it is you way the way you see it now but then what I did was I went to the back and went around with the number I only had tens I didn't have any 11 so I went around and did a lot more decreases on the back um, so that it was tight and now I'm going through with number 15s which are very tiny and I'm kind of filling in the blanks and then I'm, I'm good so that I, I want to get to where I have a fairly smooth edge and then I'm going to net over this so that you don't see the back because it's kind of unpleasant I mean it's rough looking and there's you can see where it's been glued and there's other stuff so I'll just leave enough uh, so that you can get the pin in and open and, and shut um, so I'll keep doing that with the little 15s they're great little um, spacers if I can find my needle I'll uh, kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing okay get a bead on now where am I? I'm right up here okay so I have a little gap there so I'm going to go over to the next bead and close that gap and then go on to the sorry sorry about that to the next bead after that so I'll get another 15 And where's the next gap? Oh, there isn't really one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed my... Well, there is a beat. There is a gap right there. Okay. So then I'll go over... I think I'm going to go to there and through those. Just sort of evening up and then continuing to tighten up this edge. So I'll keep going till it's smooth fairly smooth all the way around. I can actually go through a couple here. They don't need any more beads. I guess I have to go through one at a time. Go through that one. Go through one beside it. Then get this little tail out of there. Looks like I could use a little 15. Just 
between these two. Well, this is hard to do on with the camera. There we go. Okay, through those two beads. And then there's a 15. Did I get through the okay then there's a little space there go through those two where's our next space we're gonna put one right here through there And then, yeah, I need one. Between those, and then I'll just slip on through that bunch. Oh, my tip of my needle's missing it. There's one. Through that one. Now my 15s are starting to line up. Yep. So I think I'm going to skip to the next one because I don't need it so full. I need it a little looser there. But I can also, let's see there. Go through this one. Not sure how I got the top so chunky like that, but uh, the also the, the brooch itself was uneven around the edges, so that's part of it. This one, and the one next to it, pull it tight, definitely don't need another one in there, and go through these three. I need some in here to fill in and make a nice smooth edge. Take one to there, to there. Sorry, I keep going below the camera. Let's see where we are now. Through here there okay now I have a big gap in there for some reason so let's get one in here another one on the other side Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, it's a pretty big space. So I'm going to put two little guys. If I can get it on the... There we go. That looks better. This part is fine. I'm just going to go through and around. Go 
try to get my needle back out. Doesn't wanna. So, oh great. Well, I'll go, there we go. I got a little 15 sticking down there, so I'm trying to make my way over to him. And I think that's going to be where I start my a um, little bit more of a fancy edging. If I can get my thread that far. There we go. Okay, so. How are we doing? Is it even enough? I'm going to probably do one more row on the inside. Though it is pretty, it's pretty good. Um, I think what I'll do is come through this 15 and add one. Two, three, four, five. Let's see how long that is. That's, that's a little, oh, that's good. Okay. And then I'm going to go through this next 15. So I'm going to start making uh, little loops around the back um, so that I can do more of a netted covering. So one, two, three, four, five, and there's my next 15. And then after I've gone all the way around, I'm going to go do the next row by going into the, the middle one, so the third one of each of the five. There's five. Okay, I'm going to go, let's see. How close do I want to put it? Okay, I'm going to go to this little 15 over here. Should be close enough. Yeah, oh yeah, that's close enough. I'll do one more. Three, four, And I'm going to go to this little 15 right there. Whoops. Oh, that's okay. Just put the thread under the pin. And I'll leave it there. So, you can see I've started making these little loops. And I'll come back when I'm ready to, when I've moved all the way around and I'm ready to start joining them. Sorry, there you go. That's a little better. And here I'm back after doing the little scalloped edge all the way around. It's a big improvement. There's just one big white hole up there, but I'm not going to worry about it. And this is what the front looks like. Again, don't worry about that extra thread that has to get woven back in. Um, yeah, I'm, look, I'm quite pleased with how that's come along. And I think I just have to finish up the back. So what I'm going to do is one row that uh, joins the center of each of the loops and we'll see how that looks i have to i have to be careful not to make it much wider on this side it's and it's narrower on this side so i might do some fiddling around just to balance it out and i'll come back when it's finished well i'm back and i'm finally finished my bezel i think you've already seen the front or i'm pretty sure you've already seen the front um, it's not as even as it could be. I, ideally, with a photo frame, you have a like the darker frame would be 
thicker at the bottom and mine happens to be thicker at this top corner and I think it's well, it's to do with the, with the fact that this is my first time doing this and it, I didn't get it quite even. Um, but I'm very happy with the way it turned out and I'm very happy with the transition, um, that sort of ragged edge um, into the pin. I, I think it helps it blend nicely. And I think that softer gold, the, the darker gold, the not bright shiny gold, um, complements it much better than a, a bright shiny gold would. And this is how I finished the back. And I showed uh, you one iteration and then I, I kept going from there and it wasn't working out and I was trying to fill the whole back and so I ended up taking out two sections of thread. And this is what I decided upon in the end. It's not totally even in terms of the netting down here. Like there's a, it, yeah, it's a little wonky. But again, for my first attempt, I'm, I'm quite happy with the way it worked out. And I, I discovered that I really did have to leave um, the pin fully, I could uh, fully open. I couldn't sort of net around it. It kept getting caught with the pin, and so to use this as a brooch, I had to uh, avoid the pin. And I decided not to bother covering up, you know, any lower there. It, it, it uh, you know, it, it's easy to see how this was made, what it's made of. I tried to get this to look a little lacier, like a mantilla, a Spanish mantilla would look, and it didn't really work out. There's some funny spaces here and there. Um, but I learned a lot and I'm uh, happy that I shared it with you. Um, and let me know what you think of it. Um, I'm going to have to find a nice uh, time to wear this. I have a lot of things that this sort of greeny color would go with and I would like to wear it just to get people's ideas of terms of what they think it is. I think of this as a Spanish lady with a mantilla. I might be totally wrong. I haven't checked online or looked up any comparables. But um, I'm so happy that this is a nice smooth edge now and I can uh, wear it without all its bumps and cracks. Thanks very much, Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join me again for another Makers Monday. Bye for now.